Time for a new episode of Coffee and Cases. Today we take a closer look at the interesting business case of ProGlove and we've brought some coffee and a lot of time to talk about your technology, your products and the journey you took as a startup. Could you please introduce mm -hmm. yourself and tell us who you are, what you do at ProGlove? Yeah, so uh, thank you for being here. My name is Konstantin Brunbauer. I'm the Vice President of Production here at ProGlove. Um, with the team since the beginning, went the journey together with um, Dimension uh, since uh, the last five years. First of all, I want to know what is your technology? What was yeah. the idea behind ProGlove? The barcode scanner is the digital de device number one or was at this time. Um, so we said let's, let's do a variable barcode scanner and um, make that smart. Where's ProGlove now five years later? We have a, a great product market fit, I would say, for our Mark family. So the, the scanner combined with the variable and we are uh, in different use cases and in different industries. So automotive, logistics, retail. How are your products produced and manufactured? We have um, like two product tracks. One is uh, hardware, so really the scanner. The other one is the variable, which is a consumable. The hardware, we always start with um, SLS and coloring with, with um, dimension. We have electronics components that go into housing. That's kind of the, the basic for, for every product. Why did you first of all decide for 3D printing? We use the FDM printers for very early stage prototypes and at this time also the quality was not on, on a level where you could use it for anything more. So it was really just getting a feeling for the first shape or function. Then whenever we wanted to really test something or make uh, use something, we used um, SLS parts. So Dimension really um, enabled us there to use that for like a first test batch. And we built 50 pieces, brought it to the customer. We saw, hey, that's, that's working. They are like um, really looking still good after some, some months of use and also like the protection um, of, of, uh, of the material itself was, was there. So we really decided to not go the traditional way and already start then with, with injection molding, mm -hmm. but really used, um, used the SLS for, for our serial production and ramp up. So how were you able to, to overcome these challenges that you had in the beginning with regards to technology? Formrise were like uh, doing doing the parts for us, and they um, supported us a lot. But also, for sure, Dimension helped us to like really make use out of of the technologies. I think really um, the collaboration there helped us to to trust in this technology and to design it in a way that we can use it. And um, definitely, so the white parts are would would have been a no-go, so we, we wanted to have really this orange lighting signal. And um, yeah, as far as I know, uh, it was also the just the standard orange dimension head at this time, so yeah. we, we just took that one. And uh, that's our ProGlove Orange now. With um, the print-to-product process, um, really we, we um, saw also the development to have competitive parts to really use it for, for serial production. So I really think it's also per perceived as a premium um, compared to uh, some of the SLS part, uh, some of the injection molded parts. Mm -hmm. And um, for us in the manufacturing process, it still gives us the freedom to change uh, things. So definitely what we have now is um, a reproducible uh, process. So uh, every part looks the same. Uh, we have um, a, a perfect coloring throughout the, the surface. And um, uh, yeah, I think there yeah, we really have um, a, a, a process now that enables us to um, compete with the traditional um, manufacturing technologies like inj injection molding. And your example shows um, that these are technologies that can go hand in hand. Using uh, the mic display, for example, um, can you tell me how the uh, production process looks like? Yeah, so um, the mark display currently is still assembled in-house. Um, so we like source the parts on, on our own and um, uh, have a partner who is doing the 
um, uh, SLS printing for us um, and also using the dimension machines. So after we, we release um, a product and we ramp it up, we, um, we are going with SLS for some, for, for some of our products. Um, because we still have a lot of features in the backlog we want to add to this product and uh, we want to improve it. And these innovation cycles are really enabled by um, SLS printing and the coloring from dimension. Last one or two questions that I have. Um, it's about the future. So what are the next uh, steps on your agenda? What's next? What's the vision for the future? Definitely we are like bringing the mock display into volume now. So um, we started uh, or we introduced it uh, some months ago and um, are ramping it up at the moment. So it's, it's ready for sale. Um, we also will see some, some new products again with, with the support of uh, Dimension and um, definitely also um, working more intense on, on our software and cloud um, products. So um, there will, will come up some nice products uh, in the future. Thank you very much for the interesting insights. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you and we're definitely looking forward to working together in the next years to come. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.